noted that small tables do not need indexes. How small is small? At what point do we no longer index a small table? Now, this is a little embarrassing. Let me explain why it's embarrassing. Because when this question came in, I said, that is total BS. There is no way that anyone should ever advise you that a small table should not need the index. I said, where did you read that? That is absolute garbage. And they went, oh, it's in the Oracle Administrator's Manual. And yes, it is. That's from the 18C. Um, I haven't checked the 19C docs, but yet there it is. Smack right in hard copy print. Small tables do not require indexes. Yeah, not so good. Let's talk about where that argument comes from. And it comes out in this concept what I call plausibility. Plausibility is a risky thing. And let me give you an example which is unrelated to Oracle, but hopefully explains why plausibility is generally not such a great idea. I've got a chessboard here and I've got some dominoes. In fact, I've got one domino. Or well, my little puzzle is, can I cover completely a chessboard with dominoes? Well, I can't. It's fairly obvious. Each domino occupies two squares. I just throw them in however I want and you can see I can cover it up. The interesting trivia question is, is if I remove two of the squares on the chessboard, so you can see the two little boxes of blue there, like I've cut them out with a saw, can I still cover a chessboard with two square sized domino pieces? And yes, I can. That's how I solved that one. What if I move the squares around a bit? How about those two? Not a drama. How about that one? Not a drama. This is the plausibility concept. I can take as many different sets of missing two pieces as I want, and I just keep filling in with dominoes. Therefore, a plausible claim of mine would be, yep, as long as you take away an even number of squares, I can always fill it with dominoes. Let's look at this final example. What if I take away the two corners? Can I fill it with dominoes? And you're welcome to try this. And the answer is, you can't. It's impossible. And this is trivial to prove. Every time I cover the chessboard with a single domino, I must cover a black and a white space. So every domino will always cover a black and a white. In that example, I took away two whites. So now I've got more blacks than I have whites on that board. It is impossible to cover with dominoes. And in fact, any combination where you take away two of the same color can never ever be covered with, an, with dominoes. So just because I presented a number of arguments that said, yep, it seems to be possible, plausibility is not proof. And here's the, here's the plausibility argument that people make with small tables. Here's my small table. I'm looking for one row in it, and that table looks like it's got three blocks. So I do one read, two read, three reads, because even when I found my row, I still continue to see if there's more of the same matching my predicate. That's only three IOs. But of course, full table scans are better than that. I can do that all with one IO because I have a thing called multi-block read count. It could be one, it could be two, eight, up to 128 blocks I could read all at once. You even see people arguing that if my table's less than 128 blocks, I don't need to index it because I can do that in one IO. One IO is all I need. Compare that to an index. If I put an index on that small table, well, an index is a B tree. I have to read the root block, then I have to read the branch or the leaf blocks, and only then can I go get the data pointed to by that index. So there's my claim. It seems to make sense. One IO for the full table scan, minimum, absolute minimum three IOs for the index read. Surely I shouldn't have an index. The problem is plausibility is not the same as proof. Let's actually go look at an example. So here's my table called small employees. It's just a copy of scott.emp, but I've added some more rows to it, simply multiple copies of the scott.emp table. So we can see it's got 182 rows. I'd argue that's, you know, you can, that's a reasonably small table. It's so small, it occupies one block. You can see it's 182 rows. It sits entirely within one block or single 8K block. It's even a smaller table than the example in these slides there, which had three blocks. This is a one block table. Surely it is no faster way of reading that table than simply reading that one block. What's the execution plan? Just to prove I haven't got any indexes on at the moment, I do a select star from small employee where the employee number is 8104. Just grabbed one of them at random that I know is there. It's gonna do table access full. Let's do a performance test on that now. To see how many reads I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a snapshot of my session logical reads in my session as it stands now. Now I'm gonna do 200,000 queries with that one row. So I'm doing 200,000 one row lookups, simulating lots of applications busily attacking this one table. 
And then I look at my session logic reads after it and take away what it was before. And you can see it had 400,000 logical IOs. How long did my 200,000 reads take? 3.76 seconds. So remember that 400,000 IOs, 3.7 seconds. Let's now add an index. So now when I do a query on this table, 8104, that's the primary key, I'm going to do an index lookup. Once again, it's only a one block table. This must be doing more IOs because I need to read the index and then the table. Grab my session logical reads before I start the benchmark. Run my benchmark, exactly the same, 200,000. And look, it's nearly twice as fast. Performance-wise, it's better than no indexes there. How many logical IOs? The same amount. So even this simple example shows that for the same amount of logical I.O., I can get the job done with an index twice as fast. And twice as fast actually means half as much CPU, because obviously these are all in buffers. It's a one-row table. It's not going to be on disk. Having that index, even for a one-block table for index access lookup, is going to be better. But I can go better than that, because when I have small tables, I can take advantage of certain exploits, like, for example, making them indexed organized tables or adding indexes for columns that are commonly queried together. So I'm going to repeat the demo now with a new index which has the employee number plus the columns I was querying. I'm effectively making a thin version of the table in an index structure. As you can see now when I do this query, the whole thing can be satisfied from the index. I don't even have to visit the table. Check the logical reads before I start. Run my benchmark. It's about the same speed, 2.3 seconds as the index lookup. Now I'm doing half the logical I.O. It was 400,000, now it's only 200,000. Anything that reduces logical I.O. lowers CPU, but also improves concurrency because logical I.O. generally has to be latched and latching hurts concurrency. So the less logical I.O. you do, the better your application scale. What if I'm doing range scans? Here's my unindexed table because I haven't got an index on the higher date table. Run that. Oh, that's, that's a lie, unfortunately, because I highlighted it and therefore paused it. That's a bummer. It takes about four and a half seconds. I don't want to, I don't want to bad mouth the uh, non-index version. Put an index on higher date, run it again, 3.4 seconds. A little bit faster because it's a range scan, not a full table scan. Run it again. I put the extra columns now in the index and I'm down to three seconds. Benefits are there for the smallest of small tables, even if it only has one block, indexes will help small tables.